Hello class, welcome to this video on the um, Geometry EOC review. So um, let's go ahead and get started here. For this uh, packet, I have a set of standards or benchmarks. So they're all listed here um, by their codes. Um, and then in each page, it tells you the description for that particular standard or benchmark. So, um, and then the page numbers are here for the benchmarks. All right, we try to keep it to about at least you know, three problems per benchmark. Some have a lot more depending on how big it is and how much content to cover in that benchmark. But these are the different fields that will be tested on in the EOC. Um, so, you, so you can see most of the stuff is, um, you know, they're kind of spread out on, on here, but most of the um, benchmarks are geometric reasoning, which is like proofs and things like that, and, uh, you know, lines and triangles and things like that. And then this is going to be your cheat sheet um, that you'll have. So notice you have a lot of conversions, standard stuff. And then you have distance, midpoint, slope formula. So you don't have to memorize those. Uh, special right triangles, you don't have to memorize that. Um, and then you have formulas for volume, surface area, for the various solids. And, um, and then you have trig ratios, the Sokotoa stuff. And that's about it. And that's all you're going to be um, expected to receive um, you know, for the cheat sheet. All right, so uh, first benchmark, prove relationships and theorems about lines and angles, solve math and real problems uh, involving postulates, relationships, and theorems of lines and angles. So for number one, which, statement, which statements should be used to prove that the measures of angles four and six sum to 180? All right, so for this problem, they want you to prove that four and six add up to 180, right? So for this one, we want to prove that the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 6 is 180. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the answer choices to see if we can use um, them to one of these to prove it. Angle 2 and 4 are congruent as vertical angles. Uh, that's true, they're congruent in their vertical angles. Angles 5 and 6 form a linear pair. 5 and 6 do form a linear pair since they um, add up to 180 degrees. I'm going to redraw this, actually, this diagram. Uh, let's see here. So um, in this case, okay, so they said that, oh, um, I, I labeled this incorrectly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. So they said that 2 and 4 are congruent, right? So let's see if that helps us prove it. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. And then they said that um, angles 5 and 6 form a linear pair. So remember, these, these are vertical angles, so that makes sense. Um, they're on their opposite sides, and they're going to be congruent. And then these two angles here... Um, add up to 180. They form a linear pair because they form this line, right, which is 180. Now, if we're looking at that answer choice, well, then that means that these add up to 180. Now, is that going to help us prove this statement here, number one, or I mean, in, in number one, this prove statement? Well, the answer is no. I mean, you got the angle six here, but we need to know that angle five, I mean, we don't even have anything about angle five here, right? So um, we need information in order to prove, plug this into here so that we can get angle four. But all we know is that angle four is congruent to angle two. And so if I try to plug that in here, then that gives me a measure of angle two plus measure of angle six is 180. That's not what we're trying to prove. Okay, so it's not gonna be that. It's not gonna help us prove that. Um, part B, angles four and seven are congruent as corresponding angles. So four and seven, and then six and seven are a linear pair. Okay, so... Um, so they're saying that the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 7 because they're corresponding. 
um, corresponding. Yeah, that's true. These are corresponding angles. Um, these are your sandwich terms. Remember when you have parallel lines and then a transversal? Um, so that's true. And then uh, they said that one or six and seven form a linear pair. And that's true, this, this and this form a linear pair because you see this line, uh, this is 180 degrees here. All right, so that's your linear pair. So that means angle si um, seven plus angle six is 180. Now this we can use because if you notice, we know what measure of angle seven is, it's equal to this. So we can plug this into here and we get the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle six is 180. And that's exactly what we were trying to prove here, right? So um, therefore, that is our answer. That's what we're looking for. All right, number two, for what value of x is f parallel to g? Which theorem justifies your answer? All right, so, um, so we want these to be parallel. Okay, so we want them to be parallel. And in order for them to be parallel, we need to um, know what these angles are. Well, these are exterior angles because they're outside the sandwich. You think of my sandwich analogy with the bread, bread, and then this toothpick here. Uh, well, this is these are outside the sandwich and they switch sides, so they're alternate. So they're alternate exterior angles here. All right, and we know by the alternate exterior angles theorem that alternate exterior angles are equal. So these two angles are actually congruent. So what we're going to do is we're going to set them equal to each other, and then we can solve for x. All right, so there's our equation. We'll subtract 10x on both sides. So I get 5 equals 2x minus 9. I add the 9 to the other side. So we get 14 equals 2x. And so divide by 2, x is equal to 7. All right, and the theorem that we used. So we got two answers, A and C. Which theorem did we use? We used the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. Alternate exterior angles, these are exterior and are alternate. And the, we used a converse because the converse states that um, if you know that these angles are congruent, which is what we did, then that means that the lines are parallel. That's the theorem. All right. Number three, if angle one is congruent to angle two, can you conclude that any of the lines are parallel? Explain. Okay, so angle one, if we know that these are congruent, for instance, then which ones are going to be congruent? Which uh, lines are going to be parallel? Well, one and two are dealing with these two lines, right? And this transversal. So this is my sandwich model, it is line P and N are the bread, and then M is the toothpick, the transversal. And so these are corresponding angles. One and two are corresponding. Corresponding means you're in the same corresponding position. So like for example, you're below here and to the right here. Here you're below and to the right. So they have the same exact position. Um, and so by the corresponding, uh, the converse of the corresponding angles theorem, that means that n and p are going to be parallel. All right, so these are corresponding. Um, so let's, let's take a look. A, it says no, angle one and two show no relationship. That's not true. Yes, lines L and M are parallel. No, we're looking at n and p. So yes, n and p are parallel because the corresponding angles are congruent. Yes, that's what we're looking for. All right. Number four, Peach Street and Cherry Street are parallel. Apple Street intersects them as shown in the diagram below. If the measure of angle one is equal to 2x plus 36, um, so okay, so we can put that here. This is 2x plus 36 is this angle here. Um, and then the measure of angle two is 7x minus nine. What is angle two? Um, so what is the relationship between these two? Well, since Peach Street is parallel to Ch Cherry Street and we have this transversal, we got our sandwich model here. These two, um, what's the relationship between these two? Well, these two don't have a name. However, we know that two, that we know that these are vertical angles, right? So that's 2x plus 36. Then this has to be 2x plus 36. So they're going to be the same. And then these two angles here, uh, this 2x plus 36 and then this 
angle two, these are not congruent, by the way. Um, that's why I indicated with this two marks. Um, these actually are supplementary. They added to 180. So these are supplementary. Uh, in fact, they're consecutive interior angles, right? So we, we call those consecutive interior. Consecutive interior is when you have, you know, the parallel lines. It doesn't have to be parallel lines. It could be any two lines cut by a transversal. The uh, consecutive interior are the, the two interior angles that are next to each other. They're inside the sandwich because they're interior and they're next to each other like this. All right, so A and B would be consecutive interior. Um, all right, so in that case, so in this case, they add up to 180. So 2x plus 36 plus 7x minus 9 is equal to 180. And they only add up to 180 if these two lines are parallel. All right, so let's go ahead and add these two together. So 2x plus 7x is 9x. 36 minus 9 is 27. And then equals 180. So you get 9x equals, we'll subtract 27 on both sides. So you get 153 divided by 9. And this is divisible by 9. So uh, let's see, 9 goes into 15 once. And then 9 goes into 63 seven times. So we got 17. All right. And that, oh, well, that's the value of x. So we got to be careful here. This is the value of x. They want the value of angle 2, right? So we need to plug this into the measure of angle 2. The measure of angle 2 is 7x minus 9. So 7 times x minus 9. So here we have 7 times 17. Um, so 7 times 7 is 49. Carry the 4. So this is going to be 119 minus 9, which is 110 degrees. All right, so you just got to be careful with uh, answering the question that they're asking. All right, the second benchmark, prove triangle congruence or similarity using SAS or SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, angle, angle, AA, and HL. So in the figure below, what is the value of X? So um, these two triangles, are, are they congruent? Well, the answer is yes, because we got, we got a side, angle, side, and then we got side, angle, side. And therefore, these two triangles are congruent, right? So um, they're congruent by SAS. And because they're congruent by SAS, we can say that these two sides are congruent by CPCTC. So that means that x minus 4 is equal to 19 by CPCTC. Remember, CPCTC stands for corresponding parts of congruent angles. Oops, of congruent triangles, sorry. Are congruent. So we got C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So the corresponding parts are B, C, and D, E, or uh, and F, E, sorry. And those are corresponding and they must be congruent because the triangles are congruent. All right. So then we can solve this. We can add 4 to both sides. So we get X is equal to 23. All right, number two. In the figure shown, what additional information is needed to show that the triangles are congruent by SSS? Um, so we got S, S, and then we got this S, uh, those two. So we got SS. We need another side, right? In order to prove that these are congruent, we need to know, um, need to know. So we need to know that these are congruent, right? So we need to know that AC is congruent um, to DF. So we need to know that AC is congruent to DF um, to be able to prove by SSS. All right, number three, for the two triangles with identical orientation, what rigid motion is necessary for SAS congruence to be shown? Okay, so um, 
So in order to prove, so these are in the same orientation. Uh, so we want to prove SAS, right? So we want to prove that, you know, we have S ang side, angle, side, side, angle, side. All we got to do is to translate this. If we move it and it overlaps, then we can prove, okay, well, since the sides overlap, then they must be congruent. And since the angles overlap, they must be congruent. So you have to do a translation. You have to move it, right? So we got to translate it. And that's, that's the way that we can um, make them overlap and then prove that they're congruent by SAS. All right, so number four, given the information regarding triangles A, B, C, and D, E, F, which statement is true? Okay, so uh, it's better to actually draw the situation. So let's uh, do a visual. So given the information, so this is triangle A, B, C. Um, so let's go ahead. So we got triangle A, and it doesn't matter how you draw it. We're just, you know, just a visual. A, B, C, and then the other one was D, E, F. Okay, so they said that angle A is congruent to angle D, to this angle here, and then angle B is congruent to angle E, and then it says that B, C is congruent to E, F, so B, C is congruent to E, F. So what can we say about these two triangles? Well, are they congruent? Well, first off, yeah, they're congruent by angle, angle, side. So we got we got ourselves uh, angle, angle, and then side. So that's a that's a that's a theorem or postulate uh, for congruent triangles. All right. So the given information matches the SAS criterion. No. Um, given information matches the ASA criterion. No. Uh, angle C and F are also congruent. This must be shown before using the ASA criterion. No, um, hold on. Um, so this one is, uh, I think that, I believe this is a typo. It should say, um, um, this should actually say AAS, not ASA. So that's, um, uh, let's see. Um, okay, so it, let's check a look at C just in case. So uh, I, I want to say that it's a typo, but let's actually check C. So angles C and F are also congruent. This must be shown before using the ASA criterion. So ASA. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, if we know that if we know that C is congruent to F, so I'm going to mark them by three three um, arcs. Well, then, in that case, we could say angle, side, angle, right? Angle, side, angle, A, S, A, A, S, A, right? So that's this B angle, this side, and then this C angle, A, S, A. So we, we would have to show this in order to show A, A S, A. So that, that is true. So they're also congruent. This must be shown before using the A, S, A criterion. Um, that seems to be the true statement here. Um, so I'm not sure if this, this was supposed to say A, A, S or not, but it looks like C is true. All right, um, so is triangle ABC similar to triangle ADE? Justify your answer. All right, so uh, in order to show, for this problem, in order to show it that ABC is similar to ADE, well, remember there's there's two, you know, there's a couple of postulates that you can use, or a couple of theorems. You could say you can use AA similarity or um, you know, there's other ones like, for example, SSS similarity or anything, and things like that. So, uh, or SAS similarity. Um, so, in this case, we can use angle angle um, to prove that to show that these are similar. And the way we would do that is so, since we know that if you look at this triangle here, this um, A A D E triangle. Notice that, and then and then we compare that to this big triangle, A, B, C. Notice that these two triangles actually share an angle, right? So they share this angle here, angle A. Um, so we can say that angle A is congruent to itself by reflexive property. Remember the reflexive property is the property where, you know, something is congruent to itself. Um, and, and it's used when 
when uh, a feature is shared amongst you know triangles and, and, and you know etc. So they share this angle and therefore it's congruent to itself. So um, so there's we have that, and then we know that this 120 is congruent to this 120 angle here. And so therefore we could say that by AA, right? So AA and then AA, these two triangles must be similar. So we're going to say triangle ABC is similar to triangle ABE by AA similarity. Okay? And that's it. All right. Um, so number six, which facts allow you to prove that the triangles are similar by AA similarity? Um, okay, so we're trying to show that ABC, so this big triangle, and then this smaller triangle CBD. Well, clearly we see that we have two right angles, and we know that all right angles are congruent, so these are going to be a, the two angles that we need, or one of the angles that we need. And then we, need, we know that these two triangles actually share this angle A, right? This big triangle and then this, oh, actually, no, not that, not this, not that triangle, hold on. Um, actually, they share, because we're looking at this one, and then we're looking at the CBD. So actually, they, they share this angle right here. So they share angle B. And so by reflexive property, that must be an angle that they share, or they must be congruent to itself. So there you go, so there's my AA similarity. So all right angles are congruent, that's true. C is congruent to C. Um, no, that's not what we're using. We're not using that reflexive property. All right angles are congruent, A is congruent to B. Um, no, all right angles are congruent, and B is congruent to B. That's what we're looking at right here. All right. Um, so number seven, complete the proof below by selecting the correct statement. Okay. So let's go ahead and kind of walk through the proof uh, first off. It says complete the proof um, below by selecting the correct statement. So uh, it says that AE is, uh, we're given AE, DB, and then we're given that these are parallel. So let me go ahead and mark these parallel. So this is parallel to DE because that's what it says there. And DC over BC. So DC, it says DC over BC uh, is equal to DE over BA. So we have to prove that. All right. So. So we're given this, and then we know that D and B are congruent. So we're going to say that these are congruent, and that's because they're um, because of alternate interior angles. They're inside the sandwich. If you think of this as your bread, and then your bread, and then your toothpick here, they're inside the sandwich, and uh, they switch sides. So alternate interior angles, um, and then the same thing for A and E, right? Alternate interior angles. If you think of this as your toothpick, then that means alternate interior for that. All right, and so now we know by AA that they must be similar. So we're looking at these two triangles, uh, CDE. So D goes with B. So we just got to be careful with that. Uh, D goes with B. So remember, angle D is congruent to angle B, and then angle E is congruent to angle A. So D goes with B, E goes with A. So we gotta keep that in mind. Um, D goes with B, E goes with A, and then therefore C goes with C. And now if you think about it, C um, are, is also congruent because they're vertical angles right there. Um, so yeah, so this is the correct statement. D, E, C, and then um, B, A, C. So that's your answer. So the answer is C. All right. Uh, let's do this one here, number eight. Select all the true statements. So triangle ABC is congruent to DEC by SAS. Uh, so we're looking at, so that's ABC and then D, DEC. Okay, so we're looking at those two triangles. So we got side, we got angle here. Um, now, and then is there any other information that they give us? Um, well, there's not enough information here, so we don't know that they're necessarily similar just based off of this information alone. We need one more piece of information. We need, um, we would have to know, I mean, in fact, this S and this A are so far apart, we can't even use them in the same thing. So if we, if we knew this angle, right, was similar, was the same as this angle, then we could say AAS, right, but definitely not SAS, so that's not correct. So I'm going to delete this because we don't, so we can't say that. So no for that. So that's a no. 
Um, ABC is congruent to DEC. ABC is congruent to DEC by SSS. Well, we got a side, we got an angle, but that's it. So it's not going to be this one. AFC and DFC. So AFC and then so basically, basically the ones on the bottom um, and DFC. So AAS. Do we have that? Well, we have the angle. And we know that these two are a linear pair, and so therefore this has to be a right angle as well. So we do know that they're similar just by, you know, looking at that. And then we got a S. Uh, do we know anything else, though? Um, we don't necessarily know another angle, so we can't say that for sure. Um, actually, what we can say is because this right here, this triangle here, is an isosceles triangle. If you notice that this is an isosceles triangle because these two sides are the same, because these two sides are congruent, that means by the um, isosceles triangle theorem here, these are actually going to be congruent. Um, so that's the isosceles triangle theorem. And so therefore, we do have another angle. So we have angle, angle, side, we have angle, ang or angle, angle, side. So this is correct. So by angle, angle, side, we could say this. We could. So let's go ahead and say, all right, so let's check that. Uh, and then AFC and then DFC. So let's see, AFC and DFC. So AFC, so that's these ones on the bottom again. And then so we have, notice we have, these are right triangles, right? We know that they're right triangles uh, because, you know, of this whole property here. Um, and then this, this is the hypotenuse. This is the longest side on the right triangle, right? So if you look at this right triangle. So we do have the H and HL. Uh, we also do have an L because we know that this side they share. And so this side is congruence to itself. So we're going to say, oh, yeah, this is definitely congruence to itself. So we got a leg and we got an H. And therefore, they are congruent by HL. So that does make sense. Uh, so we're going to check those um, two statements. All right, so it says SU and RT bisect each other. Select all the theorems that can be used to show that triangle RSV <clears throat> is congruent to triangle TUV. Well, if we, um, if we draw, so let's go ahead and draw this. It says SU and RT bisect each other. So that means they, they cut each other in half. So essentially what we have is, for example, this, we could call this SU and then we can call this RT they cut each other in half. So this is cut in half and this is cut in half, like that. And they're not necessarily equal to each other. Like, like, um, and let's say, and then this here uh, probably could be uh, V, right? So we have triangle TUV and then uh, triangle RSV. Yeah, so there you go. So those are the two triangles. And then we have, you know, the RT, con um, and SU uh, bisecting each other. So in this case, all the theorems that can be shown to use to show that they're congruent. Well, if we look at these, we got, we know that these two angles are, are congruent because of vertical angles. So here we got SAS. So we can use that. Um, so SAS. All right, so we got SAS, and uh, we don't know any other angles here. So um, we can't use anything with two angles. So we wouldn't be able to use, for example, this one. And we don't have the third side either. So um, we wouldn't be able to use something like that. Um, and then, yeah, this one has two angles. We wouldn't be able to use that. Now, you might be tempted to say HL because this looks like a right angle. However, I, I didn't have to draw this as a right angle. So, for example, I could have drawn it like this where, well, that actually looks like a right angle. Uh, let's actually draw it. I could have drawn it like this, where this is cut in half and then this is cut in half, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be a right angle perpendicular bisector. It could just be bisectors. Um, and in this case, we would have, we would have this triangle and then this triangle like this, right? Um, and in this case, we, we, we would have that these two angles are the same, but we wouldn't have any other information. It wouldn't be a right triangle. So the HL is only for right triangles, and so we wouldn't necessarily know that. 
All right, so it looks like it's just going to be SAS based off of this. All right, so um, moving on to the next benchmark here, prove relationships and theorems about triangles. Solve mathematical real-world problems involving postulates, relationships, and theorems of triangles. So number one, select all the true statements if n is parallel to m. So in this case, we're saying n is parallel. We're going to say this is parallel to this. All right, so in this case, angle 2 is equal to 60. That's what it says here. So is this equal to 60? Well, first off, I think it would be easier to just start with what we know and then just build up our way and then look at the answers. Okay, so first off, we know that this is 20, which means by vertical angles, this must be 20. These are vertical angles here. They're opposite sides here across from each other. But yeah, so they're opposite sides and you have two intersecting lines. So this is going to be 20 degrees as well, vertical. And then because this is 20 and N is parallel to M, now you have your sandwich model with your toothpick and then your two breads. And notice that these two angles are alternate interior. And so angle two is actually 20. So that actually eliminates that first choice. So it's not the first choice. And then um, for the rest of this, so let's see, is there any other information that we can say? Well, we know that, um, we also know that because n is parallel to m, um, that if this is 60 here, um, then that means that this is going to be 60 because those are corresponding angles. And also, if this is 60, then this is going to be 60 as well because of alternate interior angles, or you can think of it as vertical angles because of these ones here. And if that's the case, well, then that means that this 3 has to be a certain angle because such that the, these three angles add up to 180 because now we have a triangle. So by the triangle angle sum theorem, they should add up to 180. So this is 20 plus, so 20 plus 60 plus um, angle 3. The measure of angle 3 is 180. So this is 80, so that means this, this has to be 100, right? So that has to be 100 to add up to 180. So this is 100 degrees. Uh, so angle 3 is 100. Oh, that looks good. Uh, and it looks like we have all the angles, so we should be able to uh, answer the rest of the questions. Angle 2 and 4 added to 80. Is that true? So angle 2 is 20, and angle 4 is 60. Yeah, 20 plus 60 is, is 80, so that's good. 2 and 3 is um, what adds up to 180. 2 is 20, and 3 is 100. No, they added to 120, so this is not true. Eh. And angle 2 is 20. Yeah, so this is true. All right, so we have our three choices. So number two, what is the measure of angle B in the figure below? So this is an isosceles triangle because these two sides are congruent here. And by the isosceles triangle theorem, if these two sides are congruent, then that means the opposite angles must be congruent. So like if you go to the opposite angle here of this side, and then you go to the opposite angle of that side, then that's this one, then that means these two must be congruent because they're opposite of the congruent sides. And so this has to be 62. So now we got 62 and 62, so we can figure out what angle B is. They should add it to 180 by the triangle angle sum theorem. So we got 62 plus 62 plus the measure of angle B adds up to 180, and then this adds up to 124. So we can uh, subtract 124 to get the angle B. So a measure of angle B is 56 degrees. All right, so um, it says use the figure below for questions three and four. All right, so in this case we have, notice we have vertical angles here. So this is congruent to this. So those are vertical angles. They must be congruent. And um, let's see, is there anything else they tell us? Well, and then we know that these are triangles, so these should add up to 180. So we can get Y first. So the triangles, the angles here on the left side add up to 180. So we can say 46 plus 51 plus y equals 180. And then this adds up to 97. So we can go ahead and subtract 97 from 180. Um, and that's going to be 83. So we got 83 degrees for uh, 83 for y. And then if that's 83, then this is 83 here. And then we can figure out what x is from the triangle angle sum theorem as well. So 83 plus 38 plus x equals 180. 
And then we have, we can add this together. So that's going to be 121 plus x equals 180. Subtract 121 on both sides. So x is 60, no, it's going to be 59. All right, so triangle angle sum theorem twice and vertical angles. Number five, what is the value of x? So again, the same idea, triangle angle sum theorem, these should add to 180. So add these three angles together. All right, and then so we got 2x plus 2x, that's 4x. And then, uh, oh wait, so let's, I forgot to add this and this. So that's gonna be 6x. And then we'll have to add these together. So that's negative 33 plus 15. So just combine them. That's negative 18 equals 180. Then we'll add 18 to both sides. It's 198 divided by 6. And that is divisible by 6. So we can actually do that. So 6 goes into 19 uh, three times. So that's 18 with a remainder of 1. Bring down to 18, so it's got to be 33. All right, so there you go. X equals 33. All right, uh, number 6. In the triangle XYZ, the measure of angle Y is 48, and the measure, measure of angle X is less than the measure of angle Y. Write the sides of the triangle in order from shortest to longest. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, draw this triangle XYZ. And then it says y is 48 degrees, angle y. And then angle x is less than angle y. So this is smaller, right? So for example, let's just make up a number. Let's just say that's 40, because 40 is smaller than 48, right? Actually, let's call it 42, because then that'll, make, that'll actually make it nicer. So it would be 42. Um, and then if we add those, that gives you a 90, right? Um, and then so this has to be 90 over here because this adds up to 180. This just gives you an idea of, you know, what the sides are or what the angles are. But in any case, angle X is less than angle Y. And then write the sides of the triangle from shortest to longest. Well, by the um, triangle inequality, uh, we can actually list these out. Um, so you go to so the side that is opposite the largest angle is the greatest is greatest in length. So this is the greatest in length. So this is going to be number one. Or, well, we want it from shortest to longest, right? So from one to three. So this is the longest. And then the uh, second longest is opposite of the 48, because 48 is the second biggest angle. So this is number two. And then the shortest is opposite of the, sh the smaller angle. So this is going to be the shortest side. All right, so that means in order from least to greatest, so shortest to longest, we got yz is less than um, xz, which is less than xy. All right, so that's the shortest, middle, and then longest. All right, use the figure for questions seven and eight. All right, so what is df? If the perimeter of triangle DEF is 58, what is the length EG? All right. Um, okay, so we're looking for DF. So in this case, DF is, uh, okay, so in this case, notice that these two sides are congruent, which means that this is an isosceles triangle which means that these two angles are congruent. Um, and this also means that, and notice that these two um, angles are congruent here. And so basically this is just setting you up to tell you, hey, if since this is an isosceles triangle, if I cut this in the middle here, and I cut this angle in half, this is gonna be a right angle. And not only that, it's gonna cut this angle in half. So we got ourselves a pair of right angles here. This is perpendicular, and it's going to cut it in half. So it's going to be a perpendicular bisector. It's called the perpendicular bisector theorem, is that if these two are the same, then this is going to be a perpendicular bisector. So it's going to cut these in half, and it's going to be at a right angle. So these are equal to each other, is what I'm trying to say. 3a is equal to a plus 6. 
and we can solve that. Uh, so let's actually do that over here. So uh, 3a equals a plus 6, and that's the perpendicular um, bisector theorem. All right, so in this case, we can subtract a on both sides, and so that's 2a equals 6, so then a is 3. And then remember, we're trying to find df, so we just got to plug it into there. So df equals, so to get, so let's just plug it in here. So we got 3 times 3 is 9, and then we got 3 plus 6 is 9, so then 9 plus 9. So it's 2 times 9 is 18. Okay, if the perimeter is 58, what is the length of EG? Well, now we know that this, uh, this is 18, and then we know that these are the same, right? So let's call those both x. So in that case, if we were to do the perimeter, well, so we would have to add these three sides. So x plus x plus 18. So we have x plus x plus 18. That's the perimeter. But we know that the perimeter is 58 because they told us. So that's our equation. And then we can use that to solve for x. So we have 2x plus 18 equals 58. Um, and then we'll subtract 18 on both sides. So 2x equals 40. And so x divided by 2, so x is 20. Which means that eg, uh, and then we haven't even found eg yet, right? So we got to keep that in mind. So x is equal to ef. So this is 20. This is 20. And now because these are right triangles, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out eg. Yeah, this is a big, this is a crazy loaded problem. So uh, let's call this um, b, and uh, we'll find a, we'll find b using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we got 9 squared plus b squared equals 20 squared. So again, we're focusing on this triangle, 9, b, and then 20. So use the Pythagorean theorem there to get b. So um, so let me say here I'm using the Pythagorean theorem. 9 squared plus b squared equals 20 squared. Um, 9 squared is 81. 20 squared is 400. <clears throat> Subtract 81 on both sides. b squared is 319. And then you got to take the square root. And so b is the square root of 319. And then we could just do that on the calculator um, since you'll be able to use the calculator for this part. So that's 17.9 approximately. All right, so that was a crazy problem. So that, that is my EG. So this is EG. Okay, so very loaded, but now we can answer number eight. Select all the statements that describe EG. All right, so we said that EG is a perpendicular bisector. Um, so we're going to put that here. So that's a perpendicular bisector. It's also an altitude. So, okay, so again, perpendicular bisector is when you have, you know, it cuts the side in half and at a right angle. So that's perpendicular bisector, right? So let me um, just, I'm going to draw that triangle, but it's going to be, um, I'm going to draw it. Uh, you know, with this orientation, okay? So it's also an altitude because an altitude is a line that goes from the vertex down to the opposite side at a right angle, okay? So that's an altitude. So this is an altitude. An altitude is just perpendicular, whereas a perpendicular bisector, it cuts, it's perpendicular, but it's also cut it in half, all right? Uh, an angle bisector um, is cutting this angle in half. So this is true. This is cutting that angle in half because these two are the same. All right. It's also a median. A median is a line. Is So a median is when you have a triangle and then you go from the vertex to the opposite side and you cut that side in half. So for example, that would be a median. I'll give you another example. Um, if I were to go from here to here and it cuts that in half, then that's a median, right? So that's what median does. Uh, median cuts the opposite side in half. 
but it's not necessarily at a right angle, right? Uh, so this is all of these things. And it's also a line segment, so it's actually all, all true. All right, so number nine. Uh, given AD is, is parallel to EC, so AD is parallel. Okay, so they have the little arrows, uh, and then they're also congruent. Uh, prove that AB is congruent to CB. So we need to prove that these are congruent, AB and BC. Okay, so um, shown below are the statements and reason for the proof. They are not in the correct order. Which of these is the most logical order for these statements and reasons? Okay, so these are not in order uh, as written. Okay, so first off, you're going to start with the given, right? So the given is usually what you start out with. So we know it's probably going to be B or C, right? So uh, so let's cross out A and D. doesn't make sense for those to be first because we want to start with the given usually. All right, so, so this is going to go here. And then given this information, what are we going to do next? Um, so given this information, what we can say is, well, we could probably go start by saying, okay, well, these two, we had to probably tr um, prove that these two, uh, two triangles are congruent, right? Um, so when we, in order to do that, well, first off, we can say, oh, well, these two uh, angles are going to be congruent because of vertical angles. So we could probably use that next. Um, uh, so maybe vertical angles, and then we can say, okay, well, now we got angle and an aside. We would have to know um, another angle. And so we could say, we could potentially say that, oh, well, well these two, this is congruent to this. Why? Because they're alternate interior angles. They switch sides. This is my bread. This is my bread. That's my toothpick. So they switch sides. And, um, and so they're going to be congruent by alternate interior angles theorem. So you can probably use that as well. And then you can establish, okay, well, these are congruent by AAS, right? Because now you can say, oh, AAS. And then now that you establish that they're congruent, you can then state that, therefore, these have to be congruent by CPCTC. So CPCTC is going to go last, right? So whatever you're trying to prove goes last. Um, so this is last, and then this is first. And then everything else we can just kind of go base go base off of a particular order. So in this case we got three, and then two. So that's that makes sense. Uh, so three and two, five. They all have five, so that makes sense as well, which is the alternate interior angle stuff. And then the only difference is that we know that four has to be last. So therefore the answer is B. Okay. All right. Um, so number 10, the figure below represents the swing set. The supports on each side of the swing set are constructed from two 12-foot poles. Okay, so that's this, the, the 12 feet here, and then this is the 12 feet here. Um, connected by a brace, so this is the brace at the midpoint. So this is the midpoint, so that means this is cut in half. Um, the distance between the bases of the two poles is 5 feet. Um, okay, the distance between, so that's this distance here, which is five. Okay, what is the length of each brace? So this is the triangle mid-segment theorem. So the triangle mid-segment theorem is when you have a triangle and then you have a mid-segment, which is a segment that cuts the opposite sides in half, and uh, and it's and it's also parallel to the to the leg, to the bottom, to the base of the triangle. If that's true, well, these are parallel, right? So if, if that's true, well, then that means that, um, so these are 12. So that means these are both 6, right? So it's 6 and 6, 6 and 6. When that's true, then the, then the, tri the triangle mid-segment theorem, so let me, um, let me just draw it again, sorry. These are parallel, these are congruent. Well, then that means that this length is going to be half of this length. So if this length were A, then this length would be A over 2. Because notice that two of these are going to stack. So if I, if I take this and I stack it here on the bottom, well, there's two of them that fit there. Okay, and therefore that distance is half. So um, that's it. So if we know that this is 5, then this has to be 5 over 2. So it has to be half of it. And that's, that's literally what you do. So the triangle mid-segment theorem is what we're using 
And based off of that, the brace, which we'll call x, is 5 divided by 2, which is 2.5 feet. All right. So we're going to break this up into a few parts, um, probably three, four, maybe five parts, I, I, depending on time. It, it depends on um, how many parts and, how, and the length of each video. But I'm going to stop here, and then I'll start uh, continue this in the next uh, video.